it is good that you talk about Asian because I am Asian, you know, and a lot of uh, I never had questions that much about Asians. You're a racist. We're here today, though, because you are a viral news sensation. Just listen to how one Virginia mom who actually survived Mao, China, eviscerates her local school board. The critical race theory has its roots in cultural Marxism. It should have no place in our schools. Xi Van Fleet is a mom from Virginia who survived Mao's revolution. Xi Van Fleet is with us. Xi, thanks very much for being here today. I know literally nothing about the Cultural Revolution. I vaguely heard that there might have been some flaws in its execution mm -hmm. in terms of Mao's attempt to rebuild a new, right. yeah. perfect, perfectly altruistic socialist citizen. Mm -hmm. But other than that, other than a couple eggs being need to be broken for the sake of this glorious socialist mm -hmm. omelet, I don't know much. I don't know much about it. I'm here to educate uh, Americans with my own so-called lived experience. I'm telling you not because I read it somewhere. Yeah. I experienced it. What do you mean? So what, yeah, how did you experience it personally? Yeah, so I was born in China in 1959. So when I went to, uh, when I started my first grade in elementary school, and that was the year that Mao launched the Cultural Revolution. And my uh, class was uh, um, stopped promptly and then we found out soon enough that the school was closed. And uh, we don't know when it were open. Actually, it lasted about two years. So we just had no school. And uh, so I really feel for those kids who missed school during the COVID. That's what happened to me. Two years without school. So what I did was uh, basically I had the first row seat to witness the cultural revolution unfolding. I saw a lot of uh, struggle sessions. And what is struggle session? Mm. It's basically um, public trial and shaming of those condemned as counter-revolutionaries. And uh, I've been to so many. And I've been to the one that was uh, uh, for the uh, governor of our province, Sichuan province. Yeah. I witnessed that. I witnessed the, uh, the uh, Red Guards took the governor on the stage, and uh, there was a huge crowd. And then they used loudspeaker and read out his saying, and then he has uh, the cone hat, what you call it, uh, dunce? Yeah, the dunce cap. Uh, yeah, and uh, I've, uh, I've witnessed school, girl, uh, school uh, children in my school, elementary school, school kids, um, well, they were just too small to, to commit um, serious violence. What they did is uh, they identified a teacher that's supposed to be bourgeois because uh, she wants to look pretty. And she always uh, pay attention to her appearance, and that's bourgeois. That should be condemned. So the kids followed the teacher, and I witnessed that, and call her names until they have enough a crowd and start to spit on her. So in the end, she was covered with spit from head to toe. And that's just a light violence. In middle schools and high school and colleges, professors, teachers, and school administrators, many of them were beaten, some tortured and some killed. So when they bring out the governor and they put the dunce hat on him, and he's surrounded by Red Guard soldiers, mm -hmm. and there's hundreds, thousands of people in the audience. Hundreds of thousands, yeah. What is it that they're reading off that he did wrong? Yeah, he, he did it's wrong. failure to be properly counter properly revolutionary? And no, actually, this is a, a kind of a complicated uh, um, question. And why, the question is why Mao launched the Cultural Revolution. And uh, it is because he feel like he was no longer uh, in absolute power. So he wanted to get his power back. By what? By destroying the CCP institutions that he built. So he was uh, trying to destroy the institutions and get everyone who was in charge out. That include governors, 
any local and central uh, um, government and replace them with uh, uh, his own people, the people that he trusts. And how did he do that? Using the Red Guards. And so it's from bottom to the very top. And the one that, uh, uh, the number two person that was uh, uh, prosecuted by Mao and by the Red Guards was the president of China, Liu Shaoqi. Not because that uh, he was not a communist, he was absolutely hardened communist, but because he was considered by Mao his political enemy. And we were talking about off camera though, that <clears throat> if your reference point when you come to Loudoun County mm -hmm. is some purely theoretical utopia you learned in comparative literature class sophomore year at Wesleyan, you're going to be prone to uh, finding inefficiencies yeah, <laughs> in the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to be prone to feeling microaggressions. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be filled with a deep gratitude for the miraculous achievement that is a rights-based, liberty-infused democratic order like in Loudoun County. But for you, you've tasted like what an authoritarian nightmare can be. <laughs> Yes. And it's, it's led you to be a little bit more uh, wary of, of messing with systems that are working as well as ours. Yeah. How is it though, how would you respond to someone who maybe is of a more skeptical mindset who's saying like, wait time, like we just drove here, this is Loudoun County, it seems pretty nice, you guys got like a Chipotle and a Home Depot, <laughs> they don't appear to be roving bands of fourth graders spitting on people that are insufficiently suffused with revolutionary spirit. We, what are you talking about that the cultural revolution is coming to Northern Virginia? Yeah, it's always the thing. It's a, if you don't know history, you don't have a reference point. And also, even if you know history, you have to understand, history never repeats itself exactly what happened before, right? It's mm -hmm. always rhymed like a mob. Uh, Mark Twain said. So it, you were never going to find exactly the same thing of uh, teachers being spit on uh, because uh, he dresses nicely. But it is the same thing in terms of uh, overthrow uh, existing society, including its values, its tradition. And uh, so in, in the Cultural Revolution, we are called to um, abolish uh, the four olds, old tradition, old idea, old custom, and old habits. And basically it sums up the old Chinese civilization. It has to all uh, be destroyed because we have something better. We have something better to replace it, something uh, more equal, more fair, and that's called communism. And that's not even communism, it's called Maoism. So here, what we're doing is uh, the same thing. We're going, what's going on is they're trying to uh, abolish the American four olds. And that's you know, another term they use is whiteness. Yeah, so what is whiteness? It, it basically is um, what they use the term, what they really refer to is the founding principles of this country. And so, there is the parallel, but they may look a little different. I came here uh, 37 years ago with 200 borrowed dollars. That's all I had. And I started from nothing and I made it, not from uh, someone's protection, not from the government handout. It's because the system rewards people with work ethics that play by the rules. And now we are penalized. And that's why I think more and more Asians start to wake up. And now they, 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 they think that uh, they do not need the protection. The protection we get is our, our constitution. Right. Not from some party, not from some government uh, handout. The thing that I noticed when I used to live here is it felt as if particularly the Koreans had seen what 
the script for American success was, and they just did it better than all the white people did it. Like exactly. they, they're like, okay, mm -hmm. so devoted to your nuclear family, regularly and enthusiastically participate in some sort of organized religion, preferably some form of like non-threatening Protestantism, like hyper focus on education and you know, uh, yeah, accruing elite educational degrees. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, that's the formula. We're gonna crush it. We're gonna do it even better than you guys can do it. And how about the other successful uh, white uh, liberals? We have a name for it. And it's not my name. The name I give to them, it's from China, mainland China. It's called Bai Zuo. And what it means is just literally white liberals. Why? Because those are the people, they think they are the savior. They want to play the role of a savior of the marginalized people. And because they are the one that show us that we are oppressed as immigrants. Mm -hmm. And they are the one that help us. They are the allies. Is it that they also are gleefully laughing at this section of America that is propagating an ideology that the Chinese know essentially aids them in their attempt to overtake us as the world's sole superpower. Is that what it is? They're like, okay guys, if you want a cell phone, go for it. They laugh because they know where it, it, where it would lead to. And, uh, and some of them don't wish American well. So, you know, so it's something, it's just very telling, don't you think? That, uh, uh, the the Bites or think they are they are really doing something to save the marginalized people, but people in China could see it through. <laughs> Why? Because there's no history. But it does seem like the real activating energy that is going to inspire maybe some immigrants that are more prone to conflict aversion and conformity, though, particularly in this area, is the second the useful idiot woke white liberal starts compromising their ability of their children to get into Princeton, that's when you activate them, right? That, that's that's exactly. when they're like, whoa, whoa, slow up, homie. Okay. I can do the reading groups. Uh -huh. I can do the me. But not, don't touch my like, kids. Like, do not touch. My kids. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly so. Well, it's I, not, it, it's don't, like in particular, like these kids need to at least get into Vassar or they will be a shame on me and our ancestors. And under no circumstances should you jeopardize their ascension into the educational elite. That's why like at Thomas Jefferson High School, yeah. you get enormous blowback finally from these communities that are probably up until that point were happy just to keep their heads down. They call it the it's mama, like, mama bear, you know, you don't but, touch my cups. But I said, no, it's not the mama bear, it's grizzly bear. So that's what we should be, grizzly bear. Yeah. Don't mess up with me and my cups. I, I will sit through microaggression corporate training sessions, yes. Zoom yes. call, mm -hmm. Once every quarter, if that's what you demand yeah, of me. Yeah. But if you're gonna, if like unofficial quota systems are gonna keep my 17 year old out of the University of Pennsylvania world, like that's, I'm gonna burn this motherfucker yes. down. <laughs> they always push too far. Yeah. And then the blowback, and then it's a counter revolution. So that's where we're at. The people are really fighting back. Don't mess with the exams. Don't yeah. mess with the exams.